So, we're here to uh, message Damien and start on the Damien train to Damien Town and pronouncing bosom correctly. And, uh, yeah, so we're gonna do this. Don't forget to floss every day! Dad tip number one is don't forget to floss every day. Well, uh, this is off to a great start. Um, because Dream Daddy is once again not responding. Oh, there we go. Damien seemed really interesting. A little odd, but interesting. I think I should hang out with him to get him to know a little better. Get to know him a little. I can read. I navigate to Damien's dad book page and type out a message. Hey, dude, you seem cool. We should hang out sometime. I sit there for a minute before I see that Damien's typing. But then he keeps typing. And typing. Man, is this guy writing a novel? I'll leave the computer to make some coffee. And he's still typing. <laughs> I love him! I sip my coffee and the computer friendly dings. Aizen, I must confess my excitement to be receiving your mess your kind letter. For, as you see... I do find myself available to ensure your company. I must ask her your forgiveness, however, as I believe our first meeting did not paint me in a, as a gent- as- fuck, as gentlemanly manner as I would have liked. Oh, whoa, there's more. I would be- oh, god, fuck. Um, I would be highly flattered to enjoy your com companionship at my residence for an afternoon tea and a stroll around the garden, should it please you. Till then, adieu. Yours, humbled, D. Blood March. I start the screen and reread the letter several more times. Hey, Amanda! Huh. Amanda pops out of her room. Her eyes are a little puffy, almost as if she'd been crying. Hey, are you alright? Oh, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Totally. I'm cool. Huh. I just found out that the succulent I've been watering and singing to for the last three months was actually made out of plastic! <laughs> Even the dirt was fake! Oh, honey. I'm so sorry about your plant! I can buy you a new one if you want. A real one this time. Huh. That's sweet, but I rescued that plant. And now that I know it's fake, I... She clenches her fist with determination. I'm still gonna love it no matter what! Is this what being a parent is like? Yes, sweetie. Make sure it gets into a good college. <laughs> But seriously, you know you can talk to me about anything, right? Yeah, that's why I'm sharing my succulent woes with you. Okay. Just remember that it's okay to be sad. And also remember that I love you very much. And only want what's best for you. Alright, alright. Jeez, don't make me cry again. Can you help me with something? Aww. Dad, for the last time, I'm not popping your pack pimples. No, no. Can you interpret this for me? I turn the computer to manage, squints at Damien's message. I just don't understand that speak. Like, is this how you kids communicate with each other now? <laughs> oh, totally. This is the hot new thing. See, Dad, kids got over saying LOL and LMAO and, or whatever and decided that what they, need, <laughs> what they needed to do was bring it back to the 1800s. So what do I do? Hmm. Where's your pen and quill? What? <laughs> Did you forget to unpack the pen and quill? Dad, will we ever address... How will we address the nobleman in regards to your upcoming debutante ball? Okay, now I know you're messing with me. <laughs> Father, without a proper chaperone, you'll never end up with a, wor a suitor worthy of our land. Our, or our dowry. <laughs> or... So you read Pride and Prejudice for school one time and now you're reciting things you know about it back to me, aren't you? Uh. Like, the first five pages and then I read a review of the movie. Still gotta be, though. Great, so what do I say to Damien? Yeah. I got this. Meta reaches over me and types on the keyboard. Sure thing, dude. Regards. Aizen. <laughs> Amanda says that his son and smiles at me. Well, I suppose that's that. I'm. Oh my god. I make the short walk over to Damien's house. Well, I guess you can't really call it a house. It's more of a manor? Estate? The gothic architecture looms above all of the other homes in the cul-de-sac. 
I walk past a couple of gargoyles guarding the front door and look around for a doorbell. There doesn't seem to be one. <laughs> Bitch, did you break my gargoyle? I pull the large, ornately carved bat's head knocker and back, and a hollow sound echoes throughout the house as I strike it against the door. I wait several moments before the door slowly creaks open. It's a little creepy, but I enter the home and take a few steps into the foyer, noting the oil paintings of who I assume are dead relatives hanging on the wall. As I'm admiring them, the front door slams shut behind me. H hello Silence. An oil lamp in the corner flickers dimly, casting ominous shadows against the wall. Why do I feel like all the people in these paintings are staring straight at me? Why is it so cold in here? Where's Damien? Eisen, pleasure to have you in my home. I look up and see Damien standing at the top of a majestic staircase with a walking handle <laughs> candle holder. What's uh what's with the door slamming shut? Oh, sorry. There was a draft. And the door creaking open when I knocked? Hmm. I accidentally left the door unlocked. And the creepy oil paintings? Uh. I like oil paintings. Right. Uh. Right. Hmm. <laughs> Pleasure. Please, er, sorry, please. Let me show you around. Okay. Damien leads me around his house, showcasing his parlor, sitting room, auxiliary sitting room, and the parlor again for some reason. Oh. This is one of the older homes on the block, yes, but nowhere near as old as the architecture might suggest. Oh. Through extensive renovations, I've been able to craft a residence that is both historically accurate to the Victorian period and equipped with the amenities of any modern dwelling. We walk past a door covered in bumper stickers, caution tape, and a black parade poster. Did they listen to my chemical romance in the Victorian era? <laughs> That's my son's room. You know how the rebellious teenage years are. Onward, onward, there's more to see. Uh. We reach a door at the end of the hall that Damien opens with a flourish. Oh. And this is the library. Sunlight streams in from floor to ceiling, arched windows. The walls are lined with packed bookshelves and even more books are scattered over the period appropriate furniture. Damien is clearly really proud of this room. Well, I guess, um, I'm gonna pick up a book first. Oh. You know, Aizen, in the Victorian era, there were some controversies surrounding reading. Many people thought the more tawdry novels would encourage youths into a life of crime and would cause too much of a distraction from work, work and school. Pull out a book at random and examine the worn cover. Opening it, I turn to a random page and read aloud. Ah. Naruto struggled against the chains that Sasuke had bound him with. Surely as an out of breath, he looked up at Sasuke. Sasuke smirked, unbuttoning his ninja pants. Ah. Okay, I think that's enough. <laughs> Oh my god, Damien! Damien snaps the book shut and puts it back on the shelf. That's a rare book from my private collector. Collection. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna pretend I didn't just find Sazunari porn in your, um, fucking, um, library. I'm gonna pretend. I'm really going... Anyway, as anybody who knows anything about me, I love Sasuke, and uh, anybody who knows anything more about- Wait, did one of my post- I just noticed that one of my posters fell off in my closet, but I'm like, did my other poster- did another poster fall? Just the one. Uh, yeah, okay, Damien, I'm gonna pretend to believe you, and um, also just, uh, okay. Sure. Well, I'm gonna, um, look out the window to potentially- forget that I just found that. Uh, yeah, if you know anything about my Naruto uh, face and that it's still going on, and um, my opinions on ships in Naruto, you would know what I like and what I don't like. I walk to the window and I'm greeted by a beautiful view of Damien's backyard. It's showcases this beautiful view of the rest of the cul-de-sac. Hey, I can see Craig on his lawn. He's doing push-ups with his daughters on his back. Damn. He sees me and waves happily, doing push-ups with one hand now. Damn! Did you know that Victorians spend at least 20 hours a week gazing longingly out of full-length windows? Wait, really? Oh. No, but Victorians did appreciate telling a good joke. I walk up to the glass display of pin bugs on the wall. It's pretty impressive. Nice bugs. Hmm. I pin them all myself. Maybe I could show you how sometime. I'm concerned I would stick the pin right through my finger. Oh. Ugh, the pin is gambit. Is that a thing? Oh. No. Uh -huh. Please. Will you join me for tea? I follow Damien to his sitting room, where finger foods have already been set out upon a beautiful tiered silver tray. I take a seat on 
on one of the high back chairs as Damien pours and serves me a cup of earth some tea. I can't believe we're having high, a high tea. I never thought I'd get to do this. Damien smiles to himself. What? Oh. It's a common misconception that high tea refers to the wealth or class of the people enjoying it. When in fact, the high refers to both the later time of day that the working class had to enjoy tea, and the height of the tables on which they're served. Oh. Uh. My dear friend, we're currently enjoying afternoon tea. That's informative. Damien takes a seat next to me and serves me a tiny sandwich. I'm gonna tell him his home is really impressive. Yes! I, it seems you've put, really put a lot of work into this place. Huh. Thank you. Aww. Mm. No one's ever complimented. No one's ever complimented my home. Oh, honey! Hell, I can barely get matching salt and pepper shakers in my place. And look at what you've done. I'm kind of jealous. Hmm. That's very generous of you to say. What got you so interested in goth stuff? Oh. Well, when I was a young boy, my father! Did he take you into the city? Sorry? <laughs> Did you guys see a marching band? I'm afraid I don't understand. You're serious? Of course. But it's, you know, the song, man who made me listen to it. Seriously? Uh. I'd love to see a marching band. Nevertheless, I've always had a love for art, history, and fashion. What started off as a small hobby of collecting taxidermied animals grew into sort of an obsession. It's a privilege to be able to under appreciate the lives and culture of those who came before us, I think. Why not go all, all the way? Uh. I like not dying when I catch a cold. <laughs> I love him. He takes a sip of tea. I can acknowledge that there were many, very many terrible things about the Victorian era, and to try to live a life that strictly aligns with those ideals would be admittedly horrid. But I think it takes a critical mind to truly appreciate something to the fullest, to be cognizant of its flaws and love it all the same. Tell me, Aizen, do you have any hobbies? Oh man, I do, but I don't know if I care about anything the way you care about this stuff. Uh. Well, I'd love to hear about your interests. Hearing someone talk about the things they're passionate about is intriguing, and quite honestly, rather attractive. Uh -huh. Please, do tell me about your hobbies. Quick, sounds sophisticated. I learned how to joke. Uh, fuck. Um, fuck. Uh, hmm. What does Damien like again? I should have looked better at that fucking page of his. <sighs> I'm so concerned about doing this, like, right, you know? Hmm. I can't believe that I'm actually going to look at his freaking likes and dislikes again and then attempt to flirt with him. No, 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 that's not what I want. Um, here, this will work. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, there's the, uh, well, uh, I really don't remember what he fucking, I know that he just likes people calling his cloak a cape. So I didn't do that. And then I complimented him, and then he was just like, oh, thank you. And I was like, oh, hun. What does he like? What does he like? I know that he likes, uh, like, what's, what are you doing? Come back. You can't just abandon me. I need that hanging out in graveyards and taxidermy. Okay, this is not helpful. Um... <laughs> Um, I learned how to juggle one. Fuck, 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 fuck. I fucked up, y'all. I...
Okay, well, I found it. The uh, written word fascinates me. We spend so much time using words, you know? And uh, I think people w- who would appreciate them more if they had to unjumble them. Hmm. It's poetic, really. Hmm. Oh, so you're a writer? In a sense. We finish our tea and finger sandwiches. Ah. Come, I have one more thing to show you. Damien takes me around the back of his home. A variety of flowers flourish in beautifully landscaped rows. Small stone path weaves through it, and butterflies fl- lazily through the air. Oh. My garden. It's beautiful. Uh-huh. Thank you. Ah. Victorians took flowers and floral arrangement very seriously. <laughs> you see, it was considered uncouth to discuss personal and romantic relationships in public, so lovers and friends alike would use b- bouquets to send secret messages to each other. Each flower and plant is symbolic of different feelings. Huh. Even more interesting is that one flower can mean different things depending on the other plants it was paired with. One had to be extremely careful, as even the style in which the ribbon was tied around the bouquet infected the message. Mm. Damien leans down and plucks a gorgeous bright orange flower off of a vine. Mm. Lilium bulbiferum, the orange lily. What do you think this one means? Doesn't it mean, um, thou art the tightest? I think it means... See, I'm trying to remember, but I feel like it actually means passion. So my loins are ablaze? No? Okay, um, so I was wrong, and I'm, like, obsessive of getting this right. So, god, I'm really bad with Damien. Three cheers for sweet revenge! God, Damien, why are you so hard? Craig is so easy to appease! But, like, Damien, I feel like I have to know things, you know? God, I love him, but, like, oh my god. Usually, it's actually symbolic of pure hatred. Wow. Hmm. And that's precisely why floral arrangement is so challenging. What's your favorite type of flower? Is he gonna judge me on this too? Damien, you need to stop doing this to me. Um. I like snapdragon. I like snapdragons because they're cute and they do that little thing where they look like they're tracking what you skin them together. Oh, that's a nice choice. I'll have to remember that when I put together a bouquet for you. He he would put together a bouquet for me? Nobody's ever given me a bouquet before. I follow Damien down the footpath and admire more of his beautiful flowers. Suddenly, a phone rings. Huh. Oh, Aizen, will you excuse me? I must take this. He pulls a cell phone out of his pocket. I'm a little surprised it's not a rotary phone. Go for it. Damien smiles and walks back to the house. Take a deep breath and enjoy the heavily perfumed air. What a lovely yard. This makes me wish I had put a little more effort into the garden Amanda and I tried to start one time. Our watermelons grew to the size of cherry tomatoes and then immediately died. Oh, hey, a gargoyle. Oh, no, I knocked over the gargoyle. Fix that garg. Fix that garg. Nope. Nope. Okay. That's the head. No. Oh, I can flip it upside down. There. No. There. Nope. No, no, no. Flip it. There you go. Oh. I got it. <laughs> That was stressful. <laughs> I'm like, no, flip it. I didn't know I could flip it upside down until I flipped the thing. And it's just, hmm. Damien has so much effort, and I'm like so stressed, and I'm just pet every dog. Damien has like so much effort, man. I'm like, I love him. But like, oh my god, I feel like I need to know things to date him, and I'm just not good at this. And also, Dream Daddy stopped responding again. Maybe, maybe Dream Daddy will respond one day. Maybe someday. I think my computer's battery is actually running well. Oh shit, it is. <laughs> Ooh, that's not good. Thank God. Phew, that was a close one. Oh, here comes Damien. He looks upset. Ugh. Aizen, my sincerest apologies to have kept you waiting. 
Or is it an urgent matter that I must attend to? So I'm afraid I must take my leave. No problem, dude. Everything all right? <laughs> Damien raised the hem of his coat with... Shit, my battery's running low. <laughs> with his fingers and looks away. <laughs> Everything is perfectly fine. But I, uh... It's Lucian. What's wrong? <laughs> he appears to have... Well, his teacher needs me to come to school. Post haste. Do you need help? <laughs> oh, no. You don't have to... Let me come with you. Us dads gotta stick together. Oh. You're... Right. This is one of Lucian's more elaborate stunts. I'd greatly treasure having another parent by my side. Let's go. Hmm. Damien and I walk into the school and are immediately greeted by an anxious-looking Hugo. <sighs> hey, Damien. You're here in record time. I wouldn't miss it for the world, dear friend. Wow. Whatever it is, it doesn't seem like this, Hugo, this is Hugo and Damien's first time to the My Kids Are in Trouble rodeo. What is it this time? Oh. This Damien... You have to see to believe. Dean and I fall into step behind Hugo, who leads us through the busy corridors of the school. We have several classes in session, and I vaguely wonder if Amanda's around. Hugo eventually ushers us into a small boiler room with a flight of rickety stairs leading down into darkness. And I'm going to leave you in darkness for a moment while I grab my computer charger before it dies and I cry. So, enjoy the scenic view of darkness while I'm gone. Alright, so this isn't the ideal place for me to plug in my laptop because it uh, is on the wrong side of where my charger is, but uh, my laptop's about to die, so it'll do. Mm. My headphones can't stop getting caught in things. Watch your step. I can hear faint voices stretching up in the basement, and they don't sound happy. As I'm wandering to the depths of the school, I recall the intakes I got into as an angsty middle schooler. So yeah, it's sense enough to stay out of creepy basements. <laughs> oh no! We find another teacher in a boiler room tucked away in the back of the basement. With him are Lucian and Ernest, Hugo's son. Lucian has a bloody nose. Thanks for coming. I can't make heads or tails of this. I look around the scene of the crime and see a bunch of bricks and some masonry tools scattered around. Huh. What happened here? Ernest punched me. Lucian tried to kill me. Oh my. I just got a really terrible feeling about something. <sighs> tell me. Please tell me Lucian didn't try to cask of Amontillado Ernest. The room falls silent. I was not trying to kill you, dumbass. I was trying to build a brick wall around you and see what would happen. You promised me there. <laughs> he did! He promised me there was wine down here. You tricked me! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a second. <laughs> Lucian, did you try to cask of Amontillado, Ernest? I'm neither confirming nor denying that. I turned to Damien and whispered to him. What's, uh, what's cask of Amontillado? Huh. It's a classic Edgar Allan Poe short story, where a man gets his enemy drunk, lures him down to the cellar with the promise of wine of a fine vintage, and buries him a lot behind a brick wall. That's literally why I asked. I was like, are you trying... This reminds me of the casting of a Monty Auto meme, which is honestly one of my favorite memes. <laughs> it's a lovely story. So wait, Lucian, you tried to do that to him? I was curious to see how it would turn out. I wasn't actually going to leave him there. What was the thought process here? That Ernest was just going to sit still while you slowly built a tomb around him? Well, it worked for like 
20 minutes because he's an idiot. But then he realized I had, I had lied about the wine. And you were cackling maniacally. That sort of tipped me off. Ernest, 20 minutes? Dad. Sweet Manchego. <laughs> it took you 20 minutes? Son, we just did an entire two-week unit on the cask of Amontillado. And it took you 20 minutes to realize the Lucian was leading you into an elaborate roost. Did you even read the story? Literally, all I had to know was masonry tools, bunch of bricks, and basement. And I'm like, did you seriously try to a cask of Amontillado this kid? I read the first five pages and then read a review of the movie. What? It's only five pages long and there is no movie. Haha, <laughs> yeah, you're right. I paid Lucian to read it for me. <sighs> Actually, he didn't even pay me. So when you think about it, this is me teaching him a lesson. Damon and Hugo both have their te heads in their hands. You guys are always telling me to engage in the literature, and I did. I don't see a problem here. Alright, I'm filing this under what the hell. Don't do whatever that was again. You two are both suspended for a week. Ernest and Lucian high five. And teacher starts to stomp up the stairs. Hugo, I'll cover your class. Take your son home. Mr. Bloodmarch, you too. Thank you for your mediation. We all head up the stairs now. <laughs> the school in tense silence. Lucian, Damien, and I all pile into my car and begin to drive home. Lucian immediately puts his head up, and he has a hoodie. Stares out the window angrily. I'm not going to therapy again. I know, son. It's entirely up to you whether you or not you want to go. But I care about you, and I can see that you're struggling. So if you do decide that you would like to speak to a professional about your feelings, we can do that too. Huh. Maybe you can spend this next week looking for a summer job, hmm? I know how much you want your own car. I can't believe Damien's keeping his cool. I'm impressed. Fine. Thank you for not freaking out too hard. Uh -huh. I love you, son. Lucian continues staring out the window. Love you too. Oh, this is the cutest father-son relationship. <laughs> we spend the rest of the drive in relative silence. The moment we pull into the driveway, Lucian hops out of the car, slams the door, and runs inside. Hmm. I didn't expect to have that conversation in front of you. He and I have a lot we need to work out. It's all right. And all things considered, Lucian sprinkling was pretty good. So there's your silver lining. Oh. There is that, yes. Mm. I really admired how you handled that. You were a lot more diplomatic with him than I would have been. I just want what's best for him. And I don't think yelling at him would do either of us any favors. It really does. You're a good dad. <laughs> See you around soon? Oh. It would be my honor and pl my pleasure. Damien bows with a flourish. Classy. Huh. I come home to find Amanda curled up on the couch with a blanket watching TV. I plop down next to her. Yo. What you do watching? <laughs> Danny House Hunting Brothers. Extreme Edition. Ugh, I hate this show. The couple on screen bickers back and forth while, we stand while standing in a an extremely small house in the out of recycled bottles. The tiny house hunting brothers watch them with amused expressions, with their heads touching the low ceiling. I told you I wanted a two bed, two bath, shabby, shit cottage. This house didn't even have a bathroom. But honey, the outhouse is only 20 yards away. It's not that bad. I am not pooping outside, Greg! Why don't they just get a regular sized house? Hmm. I. I don't know. Hmm. How'd the afternoon tea go? It got strange. We had to go to the school to pick up Lucian, since he tried to- huh. He lured Ernest down to the cellar with the promise of fine vintage and then tried to brick him into the wall, right? How did you know that? Has everyone read this story except for me? <laughs> Lucian livestreamed the entire thing. <laughs> this entire day is beyond me. But otherwise, it was a fun day. That Damien has a character, but he's really good company. And a surprisingly diplomatic dad. <laughs> I dig his style. You know what? Me too. Date complete. I'm sensing a romance between us. 
<laughs> chemical romance. <laughs> That's a band. <laughs> I love him. Okay. So now that I'm done with uh, Damien's first date, oh, we're gonna stop here. Yeah. That was fun. A lot of that was me restarting because I fucked up. <laughs>